Well, we had the action potential traveling from the dendrite to the cell body, from the cell body down the axon, away from the cell body, and it gets to the terminal knob, to the synaptic knob. Now what? So now we have the what's known as the the connection between one neuron to another neuron, or from a neuron to a muscle, or a neuron to a gland. So we have this synapse. Okay. So what is a synapse? So it's the junction between a nerve cell and another nerve cell. The message, the action potential gets to that, but it can't jump the space. Okay, there is a small space from one cell to the next. That is the cleft, the synaptic cleft. To cross that requires chemicals. And so that's what the neurotransmitters do. They allow the, the crossing of this synaptic cleft. Okay. They are snored in little bit stored snored stored. There you go. They're stored in little bitty vesicles in these synaptic knobs and these axonal knobs and such. And you have different types. Uh how and which one gets released, there's the mystery. Figure that one out, win a Nobel Prize. Okay. So the action potential arrives, causing the vesicles to move to the end of the axon and to discharge their contents into the cleft. Once they are in that cleft, they diffuse. They go from high concentration to low concentration. And there might be some receptors on the next cell that they fit into. And when they do that, then they might trigger a sodium channel to open or some other channel to open and some other ion to move across. They might cause something else to happen. So some, some neurotransmitters actually help to cause the next action potential. So we would refer to those as a uh, uh, excitatory. Some hyperpolarize the membrane and, and inhibit the next uh, action potential. So we call those inhibitory. Uh, they're small. They could be hormones as such. Uh, they work rather quickly. Uh, and then once they are in the cleft, what do they do? They are either reabsorbed, they diffuse and go away, or they are broken down by enzymes. They don't stay in that space very long. You don't want them there very long. They're just there for a brief moment and then they're gone. Okay. Uh, most are organic, uh, so <clears throat> they they basically help the neurons to connect and to talk. Uh, and depending upon the neurotransmitter is what we interpret, how we uh, uh, view our world around us. You know, how do we see things and such. So uh, uh, one that we've already talked about in the muscles is acetylcholine. So. In a motor neuron, the action potential gets to the end where it then causes the acetylcholine to be released into the synaptic cleft. It crosses that. It uh, fits into receptors found on the motor neuron end plate, which then causes a depolarization of the muscle's membrane, the sarcolemma, which then travels down through the uh, cell, depolarizing the cisternae and the SR, releasing calcium. That acetylcholine has to be removed quickly. So there's an enzyme there called acetylcholine esterase that then breaks this down and removes it. So it only is in there for a very brief period of time. So then once it's been broken down, uh, it can be brought back in. I don't, I'm not saying that acetylcholine is broken down, but it can be brought back in. Most of them can be and then recycled reused again. So. How do we know about these things? Because we know about the diseases. And when you study the disease, you understand the function of the neurotransmitter. So a disease like Parkinson's, which has an effect on uh, motor, uh, on your muscles, if you will. So 
and they have linked that to an area of the brain that starts to break down and you no longer produce this one neurotransmitter dopamine so it's the, it's it helps to smooth the muscles out the dopamine does so so as that area of the brain uh, starts to degenerate and you start seeing these cells being affected then the dopamine levels start to drop and then you start seeing the muscles uh, that in that area that's been not work properly you might see the shaking or the tremoring or it might become rigid in certain areas or or just an unstable posture you see their notes say there so if you've ever met a person with Parkinson's then you know uh, what the disease does so they have determined that that is this chemical this dopamine uh, and that's the one that's produced by the body so they have synthetically produced it and that L in front of the name uh, when you see that that means it's a biologically active compound uh, that's about the best i can explain it to you in the short period of time that we're together right here so but uh <clears throat> it's a levo rotatory or l-dopa and there they are dopamines that are produced synthetically that have an r in front of them so but those the bo the the body doesn't recognize those so it's just the l-dopa so hey take that problem solved Mm, for a short time not so fast uh, just taking that doesn't change the disease and then your body gets used to that so you build up uh, uh, to where it just you use it and then you just have to take more and more and more just it just it's just a stop gap it doesn't work um, another example of this is the bacteria clostridium tetany or tetani so it produces a toxin that prevents the release of this neurotransmitter GABA. Okay, so what does that do? What does this GAB do? GAB do? So this affects the acetylcholine. So uh, when you have this bacteria releasing this toxin, the acetylcholine goes out and you can't break it down or bring it back in. So it stays in the uh, cleft for a longer period of time and you get a sustained muscle contraction, tetany. And such. Uh, the old timers called it lockjaw. You might even hear it called that today. Think about it affecting your diaphragm and your other muscles used in breathing. When those muscles lock up, you can't breathe, uh, then you can see the negative effects of that. Its cousin, Clostridium botulinum, it produces a toxin that then goes in there and prevents the release of acetylcholine and if you can't release that then you can't get muscles to contract so this is found in uh, foods and it gets into the body and it affects the smooth muscles of the intestines the stomach and intestines and the muscles can't work and they can't move the food through the intestinals and through the intestinal system as such and then bad things happen so, uh, other drugs and such that they've studied work on the synapses, cocaine, LSD, caffeine and such. They all work on the uh, at the synaptic level of these things. So, all righty. There you go.